please, the screen is yours. Diana, uh, you can hear me? Um, yes. Good. Thank you for the invitation and uh, it's a pleasure to see you all. I've had a few internet dropouts during the first two papers, so if that happens, I apologize. But there's nothing I can do. Um, Bernard left us with some tasks. Tasks. Ones that he deliberately left us with and ones that he left us with by not having completed them. And those tasks are ones that we have to adopt as our own and to figure out in our own way. One of the ones that he left us is what I would like to talk about today, which is the idea that we need a new foundation for theoretical computer science, something I know very little about. So uh, for me, the question is, what does this really mean? I wonder if I can show you something here. Um, he, in an, in an article that was published this year in Angalaki, he, he put forward this call in a discussion with uh, the work of Yukui. And I don't think that's going to work. Let's forget about that. All right. And uh, the question is for me, what does this mean to refound theoretical computer science? Um, clearly, it has something to do with fields outside of just computer science. What he means is something like that uh, it's theoretical in a metaphysical sense that it tries to take over the law of exchange, of all exchanges, and that it's something like a Trojan horse for neoliberalism in this way. The concept of information becomes a Trojan horse for, for what will unfold over the past 70 years. Uh, this was still a bit of a problem for me uh, to understand, and so I wrote him an email, and in, in a very interesting email that he wrote back, he included this sentence. When Georgescu Rogan posits that we must read Schumpeter with Lotka, this means that we must put back at the center of the observation, conceptualization, and organization of the economy the fact of exchange, inasmuch as it is required by the exosomatic form of life. There's a lot of things that we can understand in that sentence to do with uh, his account of uh, exosomatization and so on that we heard through Peter's uh, introduction. But what does it mean, the fact of exchange here? How should we understand this and what's it got to do with information or, or com computer science? And what does it mean to say that we must read Schumpeter with Lotka? What I want to say, and of course, like Gerald, I'm going to run out of time as well, is that uh, we need to think about this through some things that Bernard spoke about, but don't get discussed that often. And that's his relationship to anthropology. It's a great pity that he never finished the second volume of Automatic Society, which would have discussed these questions a lot, I think. So the other thing I would like to suggest is that everything that happens in the world is set out in the years from 1942 to 1950. The whole world was decided then. The ideological nexus that we live in was decided then. The germs were... were were uh, seeded then, and it's through looking at what happened in those years that we can take Bernard's call further. Schumpeter, in 1942, publishes his book on capitalism uh, and democracy, 
And he says that in answer to the question, can capitalism survive? The answer is probably no. Because capitalism tends to destroy the social in institutions that are the condition of its own protection. And so when, according to Bernard, Georgescu Rogan says that we need to read Schumpeter with Lotka, we need to read this thought together with Lotka's thought that translates this idea into the idea of exosomatic evolution and the notion that the problem is that the adjusters, in other words, the social institutions, are lagging far behind the, the, the progress of the, uh, of the dynamic unfolding that he and Schumpeter agree capitalism has been. But still, what does this mean, a fact of exchange? Well, to get further into the, that question, let's just say what else happened in those years. So, Schumpeter was 1942. Lutke's article was published in 1945. In the same year, Herbert Simon publishes Administrative Behaviour, which aims at a scientific understanding of organisational behaviour with the hope that it will become mathematizable, seeing it as a choice between alternatives. In the same year again, von Neumann publishes his, or writes his draft of a report on the EDVAC. And in the same year again, ENIAC, the first programmable computer, is built. And in the same year again, 1945, Hayek publishes The Use of Knowledge in Society, which, as Morawski puts it, conceives the market as a giant information processor. We can add more things to the list. In 1948, Norbert Wiener publishes his book on cybernetics, which is about the regulatory mechanisms common to animal and machine. Shannon publishes his thing about information theory. EDVAC itself, that was 49, EDVAC itself, the first binary computer gets built. And in the same year, Donald Hebb, publishes the organization of behavior, which is what gives us the idea that neurons form an electrical network that, again, could potentially be uh, understood mathematically. So we can see with all of these elements how they relate the question that Bernard's asking about information theory, about computer science, with the unfolding notion of, uh, of the market as an information processor and, uh, and therefore to all of the neoliberalism that follows from Hayek, etc. And uh, uh, Hayek and Simon knew each other, Mont Pelerin, etc., 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 etc. Okay. But does that get us any closer to understanding what what uh, we mean by the fact of exchange here. In the paper that, uh, that Bernard wrote where he talks about that, he says that what, what we're aiming for is a new kind of theoretical computer science slash economics based not on the calculability of everything, which all of these things that I've just listed are premised on, but on something like a limited calculability. So the question becomes, what does limited calculability mean and how can we begin to understand it? So for that, I would suggest we go through another set of texts that are published at the same time. In particular, in 1949, we have Levi-Strauss's The Elementary Structures of Kinship. And then in 1950, an introduction to the work of Marcel Mauss, where he lays out his idea uh, about structuralist anthropology being potentially mathematizable through a critique of Mauss. In 1949, again, all the same years, we also have Bataille's The Accursed Share is published, volume one and hence the idea of general economies. 
Now, what most of what uh, Levi Strauss and uh, Bataille are both responding to is Marcel Moser's essay on the gift from 1925, which is both an anthropological text and a political text. In the same way as Moser's texts on the intonation were both anthropological and political. Mose himself already saw that uh, it's not in the calculation of individual needs that the method for an op optimum economy is to be found. And that man has not been a machine for very long, but he's been made complicated by a calculating machine. Now, in, in the gift, in the essay on the gift, Mose introduces his idea of total social facts. And this is what Levi Strauss will critique in his introduction. But first, he will describe it as that for the social scientist, it is no longer possible to make an opposition between the objective and the subjective, between the observer and the observed. And this is the meaning of the total in total social facts. What total social fact was most interested in? Gift exchange. And what he meant by gift exchange is that it's not just a question of giving, but of the obligation of returning the gift. This is the anthropological question that most addresses. Why should giving a gift imply the need to return the gift? And his answer is to invoke something that's in the object itself, in the, as its spirit as an object invested with spirit. And he takes from the Melanesian and the Maori term, how. And Stiegler takes up this term how in several of his books, but it doesn't get discussed very, very much in, in people's commentaries on Bernard's work. In Decadence of Industrial Democracies, he says, uh, about the weakness of the contemporary spirit that must be made the uh, object of a care through which economic models can be deployed, that even if these always and necessarily extend beyond any model and all economy, as with the economy of gift and counter-gift described by Marcel Mauss. In particular, he talks about this in uh, Symbolic Misery, Volume 2, that that uh, Peter mentioned. Noetic sense is a circuit of gift and counter gift, which is more sensational the more extended it is. Noetic perception is thus inscribed in an economy of gift and counter gift, of singularities, which presupposes, like any economy, a living knowledge established by know how, by an expertise or a techno made up of endless apprenticeships. So we can see that he's making the connection between the economy of gift and, and counter gift and the necessity for any economy of knowledge. And we can begin to understand why with this approach to economics, we can think something about what it means to reconceive the economic and information in terms of a limited calculability. And there's some more quotations from Symbolic misery too, but I won't mention them. Now, Levi Strauss, we can see also some evidence that that Stiegler might be thinking of Levi Strauss in that email where he says, every economy is therefore a system of exchange. And in the economies before history, which are also the economies organized by the clan, symbolic exchange, sexual exchange, and the exchange of material goods are inseparable. This sounds like pure Levi-Straussian socialism. So does he mean Levi-Strauss here? I would say no. But to know why he doesn't mean it, we need to know what was Levi-Strauss's critique of most. And what was it? It was precisely that Levi-Strauss did not believe in the concept of how as an explanatory concept that could be used by the ethnographer. For him, it was an additional concept. And what he means is it was not objective. Uh, that was his critique. Of, of, that was his, his appreciation of the total social fact, was to say that it, 
that it's beyond the opposition of objective and subjective, but when it comes to the critique of Mos, he invokes these terms himself. And that it's a source of energy that's just added to explain things that need, in fact, uh, de-energized explanation, which is structuralism. Now, what I say is that this question of how, of the spirit in the object, is for Stiegler precisely the question of libidinal energy. And that it's necessary to say that this energy is beyond the question of the object and the subject, and therefore requires a critique of structural, structuralism of Levi-Strauss in order to be possible. Uh, so let's undertake that critique, which, which for Levi-Strauss is simply that how does not exist objectively. Nevertheless, I think it's, it's through this anthropology of gift and exchange that we can begin to make sense of what Stiegler is arguing for and maybe to take some steps beyond what he was able to take in his lifetime. There's two things that we should say about Levi-Strauss. The first is that he himself gets caught up in this ideology of information and cybernetics. Why does he get caught up in it? Well, there's a very interesting paper by Bernard uh, Gagan about this question, who points to the importance of the time when Levi-Strauss was in New York with Roman Jacobson, and in fact lived in a building and across the uh, apartment across the hall was Shannon, Claude Shannon. However, Levi-Strauss in fact says that he never met Shannon at that time. On the other hand, Roman Jacobson, the linguist, gave Levi-Strauss a copy of Shannon's book. And also made the connection with Wiener. And we see this very early, already in 1950, where we have this uh, uh, references to Wiener and to Shannon in the introduction to the work of Marcel Mauss, say, stating that the goal of structuralism is to find the automatic laws of reciprocity. And where we have the idea of unconscious structures, not unconscious in a psychoanalytic sense, but in the structuralist sense, of course. And this is how we get to the notion that the economies of words, artifacts, and women were uh, available potentially for mathematical analysis. So there's some participation in the same kind of, of ideology going on in Levi-Strauss. And what's more, Levi-Strauss was involved in um, in CIA stuff, getting money from this from C, CIA funded institutes for running courses on uh, the structure of public opinion. The second thing is to know something about the anthropology of, of gift and exchange after Levi Strauss, because there's a tendency in philosophy and in other fields to treat this as the, as the core of the issue, elementary structures of a kinship, key book. But in anthropology, it's really a contested book from the beginning. And one of the people who contests it recently, among many, is Maurice Gollier, in a very good book called The Enigma of, of uh, the Gift, and in another book called The Metamorphoses of Kinship. Now, in the book on the gift, what does, what does Godelier say? He says that not everything is given. Some things are kept back, and these things matter. What's kept back from being given are sacred objects, sacred objects that contain the whole of the imaginary of that society. Things that are given, alienable things as opposed to inalienable things 
nevertheless can participate in the inalienable. They can contain something within them that connects to what cannot be given, to those things that are kept out of exchange. And it's through this that we can reject what Levi-Strauss says about the gift and also complicate what most says. Obviously, I'm not going to have time to, to really explain what, what all of that means. But the point is, only if you go past most and Levi-Strauss can you get to this thought. And this thought can help us to think what Stiegler calls complex exorganisms, which are the ones that set the criteria for exchange. This is a question of sacred objects, of, of truths, of uh, everything that is not merely calculable. It's the question of law. Another thing that uh, it's important to recollect is that there is a gift and a counter gift that occurs at the time that Levi-Strauss is publishing The Elementary Structures of Kinship. Before the book is published and before The Second Sex is published, Simone de Beauvoir hears from her publisher that Elementary Structures of Kinship is going to be published. And she asks to receive the manuscript, which she then reads, writes a positive review, and incorporates very much into the second sex, which of course, as you know, is an important book. And what does she incorporate? Of course, the idea that there's the traffic in women by men is a definition of kinship systems and the explanation of their diversity. Now, what makes this possible for Levi-Strauss to have this as his structuralist explanation. It's the idea that alliance is more important than reproduction. In other words, the, the alliances that are made by exchanging wives are more important than the raising of children. This is also what is highly contested, including by Godelier. The diversity of kinship systems is not reducible to fathers or brothers exchanging daughters and sisters. It's more complicated than that. For that, you need much more to think. Why does this matter? To me, it matters because the kinds of problems that Stiegler was talking about in contemporary life, about the proletarianization of, of everyday life of all kinds, for which a, the key for him is the question of desire and libidinal energy. These problems are also problems of family, of kinship, of courtship, and of sexuality. But these subjects do not receive a great deal of specific attention in Stiegler's work. My belief is that one reason for this is because he knew Godelier. He knew his work, he read his work, but he didn't incorporate these questions and the anthropological questions enough. So for me, the question of a new theoretical computer science, however far from that, from computers, it sounds like I've drifted. When you consider that the, the problems of family, of sexual, all of these things have everything to do with, with the, the relationship between computation and economics today. That we need to go further into this anthropology. And that to do so, one key text 
is in the, his book, in Godelier's book on kinship, a text called Proposals for a Different Scenario. We need a critique because Godelier doesn't get everything right. He's not organological, he's not pharmacological, but we need to go through that chapter. Probably I've used up my time, so I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, it was